Hello, it's Shriker Joe, and I'm here with a tutorial, actually. So what you just saw was a demonstration of what my script can do, and I am going to uh, show you how to set this up with a different vehicle. This is the Ant, it's just a little battery lifter, you can see another one, but this is a Fire Ant, and I have this thing set up with tank controls and this is using just one script well technically two but that's uh, a different script that's unrelated to what i'm talking to you about uh the script i am talking about is actually it's just max and i'm quite happy to say that it works very well and I have full control over this tank. Now of course, I may as well do a quick rundown of what this is actually doing with mechs. Essentially, I have added a uh, pr an extra program that runs before mechs, and when you press a key, it then runs mechs with an argument. So for example, if I press W, it's running mechs with a uh, start forward. And if I let go of it, it's just start idle. If I didn't have idle, it would just tell Max to stop. But we wouldn't want that here because it's a tank that uses motors to drive around. And for proof of concept, I feel like this is decent. It's not particularly fast, but eventually I'll have a solution for that. To set this up, I have undone everything that I've done before, so there is no configuration information which would live in the cockpit, and there is no uh, no controller hooked up to mechs. So here's how you connect mechs to the cockpit and enable the uh, keybind manager. This variable, connected controller, make sure to put within the quotation marks the exact name of the cockpit. I'm using the DLC uh, industrial cockpit. Make sure to use the exact spelling. And if we run this, it should say setup controller industrial cockpit. Now we checked this earlier. Now it has a any file with keybinds and toggle equals false. Uh, this I'll get into a little later. There are two ways to actually add keybinds to uh, Max. You could either go into the custom data, which I will get into later, or you could go into the menus of Max to do this. If you type in this exact string, it will show up this menu. Now that we've made it to this menu, you can see we have quite a bit of a text dump here. This area details all the keys you can enter. You can enter multiple keybinds at once. It doesn't necessarily say here but it's implied hopefully so if we just type keybinds forward w for example and let's say we also want to go reverse with s keybinds reverse s here's a little trick you can use to check what keys you already have in the system if you type keybinds delete with no argument after it then shows the keybinds now let's say we want to delete reverse. Successfully deleted reverse. Now it shows we only have forward. But we want to reverse. Now if we type keybinds end, that should finish the configuration. If we go into the cockpit, we should now have forward equals W, reverse equals S. Now it appears there might be a little bit of a bug when you delete stuff. I'm not sure what's going on with that, but if you recompile it, it will then recognize your keybinds. So if I press uh, W, it goes forward. If I press S, it goes in reverse. Now there is a problem with this. I am not pressing any keys and it's not stopping. To fix that, I can, I'm actually going to demonstrate how to add sequences into the menu. For example, if I say idle, which is the name of the sequence that I use to reset everything, 
and then I type O, which is just a representation of no keys being pressed. This all has to be lowercase if you're adding stuff in there. Essentially it's sequence equals keys, but any key, like W, E, D, for example, those keys, or the J and C keys. We're going to not add that in though, because we just want the idle equals zero. If we recompile max, and I tap the W key again, it should stop. And now it should go back to idle anytime I let go of the key. So I'm going to add all the other uh, maneuvering uh, things. And this is the most basic possible setup for tank controls. So if I recompile this, we should actually have full control authority. And we do. So I can turn right, I can turn left, I can move forward, and I can move backwards. At minimum, you need five. Now, just to prove that this works both in the menus, and just to ensure that you don't make any mistakes while setting it up, I did say earlier you could enter multiple keys. And here's how you do this from the keybinds menu. So say W and D, I run that. And let's actually see if that worked. So move forward. Now we're also turning right. Now we're turning left. For the custom data to do the same thing, you want to, in this case I named it reverse right and reverse left. Reverse right equals SD AS. And if I recompile that, it should actually say I have all nine bindings. And we should have a fully functioning tank. The controls should make a lot of sense here. I do have one other thing I want to explain to you. Uh, this isn't a demonstration this time because this tank can't do something that needs to wait. But you see the asterisk here. If I added a key and then add an asterisk, it tells the script to wait until the sequence has completed before it starts a new one. Which means, say I made a mech and I have a uh, jump key assigned to the jump button, but it has to like wind up before it jumps. That's where you would use the asterisk. So we have also a toggle mode. And if I run keybinds toggle, it will show you now the toggle is set to on. I could also set it to off. I'm going to set it to on and say keybinds end to save that. So now if I tap a key, it's just going to move. So I press W, it's now moving. I press it again, it stops. If I press W and then press A and then let go, I'm not sure what's going on there. I think it's noticing because I have precision mode, it's actually just going back to the last key that I pressed. Even if it's a microscopic difference. But yeah, so I just have to tap a key once and then it starts moving. And I can press any other key or any other combination of keys to resume more normal control. And this is basically the cruise control mode. But I don't think it's appropriate in this case. So we're going to go into the industrial cockpit. We just set toggle equals false and recompile and that sets it back. So that should actually cover everything that you need to know for actually setting up the various controls. So I hope this guide was helpful and I hope to see you next time.